Okay. Okay, I'm Anna Loy of Black Bright News and I'm mm. interviewing Mr. Albert Wilkie. And I just wanted to know, when did you come to the country? First, uh, I came in 1944 as a member of the Royal Air Force. Sir, returned home in 1947, then returned to England in 1948 as a migrant. Okay, so your status in the UK, what it was it back then? The status then were we would be migrants okay. or immigrants because all the colonies were still colonies. Okay. Right? Okay. And under the colonial system, we were British subjects. Okay. And when did that change? That change years later when Mrs. Thatcher decided to uh, uh, change the, the legal status with immigration. And um, we had to formally apply to the Home Office okay. for residency. Okay. Uh, once that was granted, of okay. course, they did all the necessary checks and things and to ascertain that uh, we belong, you know, legally. Then you will be registered as a British citizen. Status change because the reason for that is Jamaica had acquired its independence in 1962. Okay. Like several other colonies. Mm -hmm. So once the colony became independent, they all established citizenship. Okay. In the legal sense. Okay. So what is your take on the Windrush citizenship now, now that with the light of what's going on? My take is my belief uh, what has emerged is that the government seems to have some sort of a motive, some reason in believing that a lot of those people might have um, arrived in England as a migrant, mm -hmm. live during all these years and not legalizing themselves or formalizing themselves by changing their status to citizens. Okay. This gave them a sort of loophole in the light of now they are supposed to be establishing a quota to remove illegal immigrants. But would they, even though they didn't legitimize their papers, would could they still be considered as illegal immigrants? No, because they were British from day one. They came here as British. The only way you could um, make them illegals, if, as I said, they, they came under sort of a visa okay. system. And that didn't apply Why didn't in the apply? 40s. Because we were all co colonials. Oh, so you, you didn't, didn't need, need a visa, visa when you were, a, you were British. Oh, I see. You're so British in any case. That is what the Prime Minister have been saying. They are all British. So how can they implement what they are proposing to implement then? I think they will do it because they have the, you might say, the power to do it. Mm. Not necessarily the right. They have the power. They are the government, you see. And experience have shown them that they might very well go on challenge. Mm, okay. This is an exceptional circumstance. And the reason for that is that although I believe it was meant to target mm -hmm. deliberately the peoples that are what as they refer to a soft touch. Yeah. A soft touch. Yeah, the vulnerable. Vulnerable. Mm. But now it has extended and it applies to other people because we have here stories of New Zealanders, Australians, Canadian and other European na nations. These people can take this kind of a situation further. Okay. And I don't think the government expected um, the vulnerable, i.e. the Windrush immigrants, to have such support from the younger, you know, from their family mm. members. Well... 
that surprises me, but then it, 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 it would only sort of um, fit into the fact that uh, historically, that is the way we have always behaved. We have never seemed to be able to coalesce to the extent to become a pressure group. Now, I know somebody who came here in 1974, which is just after this time frame that they're giving. They're saying that between 1948 and mm. 1973, that group of people are protected. They're going to get their citizenship papers done free of charge. They don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. Now, my question now is, for those who came like after 1973 who weren't technically invited yeah. to work for the country, but who may have worked here all their lives, who may have property here, who may have their own businesses. What can happen to them, in your opinion? To my opinion, the only thing that can happen to them, if you are now trying to put them in the category of being illegals, is that they overstayed a visa, mm -hmm. which had to stipulate a length of time okay. when they first entered, or they are involved with the law okay. in some respect because we know that whether this is um, confirmed or not, they have been uh, operating on this guys that um, people are involved in certain aspects of breaking the law mm. can be recommended for deportation right. by the courts. Okay. So they're more or less, in your mind, they'd be safe. They should be safe. They should be safe. Because they came in, they must have come in on some sort of documentation. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, if, if they overstayed a visa, for you now to be saying that because they overstayed, no question asked, in spite of the length of time between the time entering and now, mm -hmm. you want them out. That, that is one side of the argument. Whether this is legal okay. is debatable. I think they could probably consult a solicitor or something and find that um, there are some legal grounds for them to, okay. to, to, to gain some redress okay. in formalizing themselves. Okay. If you can attach them to something that is um, like terrorism, mm -hmm. then Possibly you can bring them under some other different type of a law. Okay, but if they're that legal abiding them. citizens, yeah. they and should And have be lived all this stay. time, paid the taxes, paid national insurance, in other words, abide by all the policies that apply to genuine citizens. Okay. Then there's they no way you okay. can, yeah, you can call them illegals. Okay, well, um, just to round this up, how would you like to see the situation resolved? I would like to see it resolved in the, in the sense that um, for a change, for once, the government would do something positively. Say something and do whatever you say. So, you know, be impeccable to their words, in other words. Yes. And when you say, say something um, and well, do something. As I say, the Prime Minister, she's Secretary of State, yes for making what they think might be an, a, a mistake, a blunder, in the administration. Mm. Not herself, but maybe the Home Office okay. or whatever. That's at one level. Okay. Or you can make mistake with several hundred people. It's yeah. beyond me. It shows a, a depth of incompetence that should not be tolerated in a government agency right. to begin with. Okay. But secondly, we have never seen the government follow through in whatever they say. She have been saying that they, they won't cost these people any monies. Mm. They will give compensation. But we have no proof. Yeah. Nobody have discussed the level of compensation. And it's not written down. And anywhere. it's not written anyway. It's just her word. Even mm. though she said it in parliament. Mm. Where she's not supposed to lie. Right. You see? So we, as, a, as I say, we are not a pressure group. Mm. We have never been a people that form ourselves into a pressure group. Therefore, they are banking on the fact that we will not take this beyond this level. 
And you know what? There's a lot of organisations who are now jumping on the bandwagon. We've got Which... solicitors in America, solicitors all over the place who are saying, you know, we're going to deal with this, we're going to get you reparation and whatever. Mm. And I think it's quite unfair because, once again, they are dealing with vulnerable people yeah. who who will want to be legalised if they're not. I mean, so many of them are afraid that if they give up their name and yes. say, look, I, I was here legally from 1952 or whatever, that somehow that's going to be turned against them and then they're going to be shipped out anyway. It will it, it will be used against them or it can be used yeah. against them because America have done this. Yeah. Trump has said it himself. Obama gave amnesty was prepared to grant amnesty to a lot of the Mexicans. Yeah, I remember that. Especially the children who came and who could prove that they functioned as a legal citizen. But you know, I was in America when the amnesty came out. Right. And that actually protected not only Max Mexicans, but everybody who was in the country that before that. a certain time. I think it was 1962 or something. But they were given amnesty. And I think um, a lot of people took advantage of that and they were able to get their green card. Yeah. They're not prepared to do that here. No, well, but Trump have negated that since he came to so office. So it's turned it all yeah, around. He, he's completely said what Obama did was wrong and he's going to reverse it. So they're not safe either? No, and they have already surrendered all the data, which makes them even more vulnerable to the yeah, government. Yeah. And this is the same sort of system that could apply and yeah. maybe was applied in Britain. Okay. And the, and the slide because a lot of people they are saying nobody can prove that anybody was deported. It's, it, the people are phoning in and saying that they're relatives. And that apparently they have this tent outside Kingston um, Airport where they're detaining people until somebody can come and collect them. Yeah. A lot of the people haven't got anybody over there. Right, right. So this is part of the research that they have done. You see, as I say, I'm fine. Somebody will be caught in the net. Um. Why would you want to do this? Because, as I said, we are a soft touch mm. as a people. You know, you, you look, they, they... When you say a soft touch, I mean, Jamaicans... Well, I'll talk about Jamaicans because my background is Jamaican mm. and I can only talk of Jamaicans. But Jamaicans are seen as aggressive. Um, they stand up for themselves. They're, they're not really seen as a, far, a soft touch. So are you talking about that era of people that came back, people like my parents who, you know, are a bit more, who toe the line. Yes. Yeah, that era of people are more... We touch. may be aggressive as, as part of our upbringing, nature, because this goes back to uh, the history of colonialism. Mm -hmm. but that aside, as a people, we are mostly law-abiding. Right. We know that we are a minority. Mm -hmm. We accept that we are a minority in a majority situation. And if the majority shows a degree of resentment, we have learned right. to absorb that. Oh, okay. Instead of protesting on a violent sort of a, a, a nature sort of thing. Oh, okay. And that's what I mean about uh, we are basically nonviolent. The aggression or the aggressive attitude aspect of our upbringing is often used against you yeah. when you protest. Right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. You see, this this is another facet of the of the entire system mm -hmm. that you you, you 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 try to turn positives into negatives. Into negatives. Okay. You see, and so this is how that come about. But as a people, as a group. All the Caribbeans mm -hmm. are soft touch. They have no political clout. Mm -hmm. As I said, take the fact that um, the Commonwealth ministers are, re are right in the nation the very week that, that this thing emerged. Mm. Surely they must read the papers. Surely they must look at the television. Surely their citizens mm. must have been applying to their high commission uh, with complaints sort of thing and get back to some ministers. They are here for that specific purpose, to discuss how to further the protection and the well-being of their citizens. And now, it's, it's not a private club. Right. But I was just thinking now, um, your, if your passport is up for renewal, do you have any fears about that or any reservations about that? I have fears because that? pursuing the, the, the forms, you can see 
Yeah, the demand. You can you can see the form here. I have it out there if you want to read it. Well, I'll probably read it now because we only have like yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. But if you just summarize, I'll just show you. Yeah. Yes, a quick look at this. Yeah. Uh, this this third part. Just read that A B. A B. Um, my eyes are not that good. Well, it's, it's yellow writing. But we yeah, must fill in to renew one, two, three, and nine. The sections must be filled in. It says E. The persons that fill in section two, which is your name and all your data, right. must surrender all sorts of passports, British and otherwise. And in B, it says you must send us all uncancelled passports. With the application okay british and otherwise all passports and you notice how the all is printed in heavier type print right. which means the emphasis there is placed on a very important factor right. the reason why they want this now when you sign the declaration at the end of the form it specifically warns against misinformation okay you can be sent to prison so with that first... Is that a new? Is that in certain new? No, the declaration was, was like, always there. Oh, but in conjunction... Oh, okay. With that bit about oh, all documentation. Okay, I see. Prior to this, I think they say from 2014, when they changed the status mm. and the law, legality, that was been included. Is that when the Hostile Environment Act came out? Okay. Yes. You see? All right. And that must have been done for a purpose. Yeah. And it doesn't take a great deal of intelligence to see in the light of the Windrush situation emerging mm. since the 2014 way in which it was brought in in a roundabout kind of a way. Yeah. No major publicity or so anything this is quite like a that. calculated move. It, it is. Yeah. It is. As I say, certain people they knew would be a soft touch. Yeah. It wasn't meant to catch a lot of Commonwealth citizens, mm -hmm. which again, that word Commonwealth, we really are referring to Australia, European yeah. dominated countries, mm. Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Rhodesia when it was in existence, South Africa is out of the loop mm. now, though they, they weren't in it and that sort of thing. So Europeans yeah. were set aside and things, they were meant to be caught in it, but obviously you spread a net so yeah. wide, you see, you're going to catch some people that doesn't belong, yeah. and that is what is happening. It was meant for us as a body of people that you can manipulate, you can use. And the, the deportation is a form of dumping. Yeah. It's, it's been discussed among ourselves for years. Yeah. But like I say, you have no representation. You take this to an MP, your own MP, as the saying goes, which 70% or 80% of the time, he'll be a European. Mm. How many black MPs have we got in the house all told across parties? Yeah. Not true. many. Yeah. Eh? And even when they are, if one of them get to a, like Lamy now has brought this to the fore, mm. as I say, I have fear for his future. Ooh. I don't think he's got much of a political future yeah. in this country. Having highlighted. Well, yeah, and so fervently as yeah, well. This situation. He's made a sacrifice there that if probably, you know, we hope that it doesn't come to the point where he regrets it to the, to the extent, you know, the, that goes they'll beyond just losing the job. Yeah, they'll make his life probably Very, very difficult. awkward. Yeah. You see? Anyway, so, thank you, Mr. Wilkie, because I yeah. think the video can only go for a certain time yeah. before it cuts anyway, out. Yeah. But thank you very much for that. And there may be a part two, who knows? Right, yeah. But you thank see. you very much for your time. Okay, then. And you. We will watch and see. This is...